Good evening, everyone. It is uh, June 22nd, 2020. Uh, the time is 5.40 p.m. This is the June 22nd edition of the Moorhead City Council meeting. Uh, Madam Clerk, will you please provide a roll call? Shelley Dahlquist. Here. Sarah Watson Curry. Here. Shelley Carlson. Here. Heidi Durand. Here. Jonathan Judd. Here. Deb White. Here. Larry Seljavold. Here. Chuck Hendrickson. Here. Steve Lindos. Here. And then in chambers, I have city manager Christina Volkers. Thank you, Madam Clerk. If you can please rise and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. I am Mayor Jonathan Judd. The Moorhead City Council is holding its regu regularly, excuse me, scheduled meeting using virtual meeting technology under an emergency declaration due to COVID-19. I am in the City Council Chambers with the City Manager, as well as the City Clerk and the Assistant City Manager and a few other staff members. Council members are attending remotely. Any public comment received prior to this meeting will be read as a part of the record through the, during the applicable agenda item. The public may participate during the meeting by calling 218-299-5001. Public input will be taken by a staff member and provided to me to read during the meeting. Or you may request that your call be bridged to the virtual WebEx meeting and speak directly during our public hearings or citizens addressing the council agenda item. Again, the public comment line is 218-299. 5001. If there is no answer, please leave your message or a callback number and we will get back to you as soon as possible. We'll move on to item number three on the agenda. Are there any agenda amendments this evening, Madam City Manager? None that I know of, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. We we'll move on to Item number four, which is the consent agenda. Are there any items that will be coming off consent this evening? No, Mr. Mayor. With that. Councilmember Rand uh, moves approval. Second, Carlson. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Madam City Clerk. Dahlquist. Yes. Watson Curry? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Durand? Yes. White? Yes. Seljavold? Yes. Hendrickson? Aye. Lindos? Yes. Motion carries. We'll move on to item number five. <clears throat> the approval of the minutes from the June 8th, 2020 meeting. Any modifications to the minutes? Hearing none, I'll accept the motion to approve. Lindos moves approval. Second, Hendrickson. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, Madam City Clerk. Carlson? Yes. Watson Curry? Yes. Dahlquist? Yes. Durand? Yes. White? Yes. Lindos? Yes. Hendrickson? Aye. Seljavold? Yes. Motion carries. <clears throat> Move on to item number six, uh, citizens addressing the council. Uh, 
We do have uh, a number of communications that have been received electronically, and I think we do have uh, some folks that are calling in, uh, <clears throat> and this is pursuant to agenda item 18A. So even though this is a agenda item, we will ha be uh, hearing uh, public comments on this at, at this time. And I think at this point, I'll pass it over to Madam City Manager Volkers if you want to uh, comment on. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, for the public and for the council, as a point of clarification, the agenda says executive session for the purpose of developing offers or counter offers for the sale of a portion of Woodlawn Point. I, I think that is misleading. I wanted to be clear for the public that this discussion, although we can't talk about what we're talking about in there, it is not for the purpose of selling that land. I want to make sure that the public knows that will not be the discussion. We have received a lot of public comments through the downtown process, etc., about options for that property. And so at this point, we're talking about getting some further information, and then there will be absolutely opportunity for the public to weigh in. That discussion is not about the sale of the land. So I just want to make sure that the public understands that, and I apologize. The agenda is misleading, and if people thought that's what we were talking about, that is not true. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Madam City uh, Manager on that. I guess with that, I think we'll just open it up. Uh, we do have uh, two individuals uh, that have uh, called in. Uh, oh. Sorry. Speaker microphone was off, I get the big message here. Uh, so what I said was uh, we do have uh, two individuals who have, it's saying that my speaker is off, but the green light is on. Yeah. Now the screen went away. All right, so I'll say it again. Uh, we do have two individuals who have called in. Uh, <clears throat> I believe we'll uh, take a phone call first from, uh, I believe it's Ms. Noel uh, Hardin. Uh, Ms. Hardin, if you can uh, please state your name and uh, give your uh, address. And then after that, uh, we'll give you uh, a few minutes to be heard. Yes, thank you. Um, hello, this is Noel Hardin at um, 202 7th Avenue South in Moorhead. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Yep, we sure can. Okay, it's a little <laughs> strange to join my first city council meeting um, as a resident by phone, but I'm glad that you can't see my hair right now, so <laughs> at least there's that. Um, so I, um, I really appreciate the opportunity to speak, and I really appreciate the city manager's um, statement that she just made. Um, I, that's very helpful. Um, I wanted to start off and just say thank you to the city. Um, I'm super excited that my Boulevard Garden permit was approved last week. Um, I'm planting a new pollinator garden, um, and I think it's really great that Moorhead has this program. So thank you all for that. Um, you know, there's so much that makes me really proud of Moorhead. Um, I love the parks and green spaces. Um, obviously, you've heard a lot about that from me already. Um, I also love our cultural diversity, and I feel lucky to work with a lot of new American farmers um, that I have great respect and hope in. Um, I love our river, of course, and our commitment to being a resilient community. Um, and I want to say that I do believe that our city is taking on social justice work, um, and I want to acknowledge the work that our mayor is doing around that. Um, and so thank you for all of that work. Um, you know, this is a really challenging and emotional time. Um, and I think it's important to give grace. Um, and I hope that I can get some grace as well. Um, I know that my letter that I wrote was strong. Um, and I, I do have a lot of strong feelings about Woodlawn Point. Um, and that whole area, it's one of the reasons that that I bought my home um, and why I love this neighborhood. And I think that a lot of um, my neighbors 
and myself, I think that we have some hopes and some vision for that site. And so does the rest of the community. Um, so I, you know, I couldn't make it to the, uh, the downtown development meetings, but I really liked reading through the notes. Um, I think that there are a lot of great ideas um, and things that would be very applicable in that space. Um, I especially just want to, again, lift up the idea of food sovereignty and um, urban farming and especially thinking about our new American communities. Um, and that's really, I think, all that I want to say. Um, you know, I think that at, there's a conversation to be had at another time about process. Um, I am concerned that during the city emergency, you know, we haven't always been take, able to take up issues that, you know, residents felt very personally strongly about during that time. Um, so I think part of what got my hackles raised were, you know, this being done during an emergency in an executive session was alarming to me. Um, but I, I really appreciate the response that I've gotten. Um, I hope that you will consider the steps that I outlined in moving forward. Um, and once again, I just am proud of this city and I'm really grateful to have this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harden, for, uh, for uh, calling. Also, thank you for your passion uh, that you have exuded for Moorhead and for your work in uh, food and security. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to uh, our next caller, uh, which is, uh, I believe, Delray Williams, a familiar name. Uh, but uh, Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. If you don't mind stating your address, and uh, we'll let you roll. Yes. My name is Delray Williams. I live at 1011 10th Street South in Moorhead. And I wanted to call... Um, a little bit about your executive session. Uh, I, um, I'm sure you will make some good decisions. But during my time frame, I um, lifted up one key part that was uh, before your time, JJ, before my time, uh, when Mayor Mark was, was uh, on board, he did a citizen task force about uh, the power plant site. Um, this is back when there actually still was a building there. And uh, I, I just want to lift that one up in particular. It's a really beautiful area. And what that group had decided was that they would like to have it have a, a public, a strong public component to it. Because it's a, a beautiful area and it should be that, that kind of space that everyone in the community should be able to access at one point in time. Uh, during my time, we almost did a, um, a botanical gardens, which I think would have been a, a nice uh, um, uh, addition and would have followed that. I'm sure you guys will do something excellent also. Um, and, uh, and as I know, Dr. Bob would just as all grass. But um, uh, I just wanted to lift that up, and I felt like I would be remiss if I couldn't say it one more time. <laughs> And then I do have one more quick one that I want to say. I know you're going to be talking a little bit about um, what to do uh, with uh, Chris's departure. And um, since I've gone through that when Mike left, uh, I, I just want to say that I think the interim, and we did not have an a, a assistant at the time, but the interim uh, person um, wasn't necessarily the best idea in many ways. If we had somebody, if we had had somebody who would have been able to step in really well, that would make a lot of sense. And, and frankly, you guys do, we do, in Dan Molly. And so because we have such strong staff, um, that was the guiding thing that helped us through uh, when Mike left us. Um, staff would be able, were able to be able to take care of things, um, we have strong directors, and, and I think that is still the case. And so I, I just want to encourage that you might consider not doing an intern person that maybe have Dan fulfill that, that until some time. And frankly, I'll be, I'll be frank, I, I would love you to just um, promote him, but um, I at least want to talk about the idea of the intern thing. 
But thank you very much, and I appreciate all the work you and staff do. Take care. Thank you. Uh, I guess I, I, I have to show my respect. Thank you, uh, Mayor Williams, uh, for uh, calling in and uh, also for your undying commitment and support for the things that we're trying to do in our city and always blessed to have you call in. Thank you. Uh, do we have any more calls from anyone? Okay. Uh, I do note, I want to make a record, that we do have people who have written in. And I'm not sure procedurally wise, do we need to acknowledge receipt of, so if you could, Madam City Clerk, and I do know, and I will probably have to talk with, uh, just to make the record clear, with Attorney Shockley, and also uh, with the uh, council because I know that typically, as I've already stated, we would have, we've noted that if people were to write in, that uh, they would be heard. So we'll have to talk about after this meeting, whether or not it would be prudent to have the communications read as part of the record, or if we want to accept them as, uh, as received, when we talk about citizens to be heard during our virtual meetings. So uh, I know there's some legal stuff we need to work through, so I'll wait when Attorney Shockley uh, comes back or we can have that conversation later, but just, just so procedurally speaking, what's the right way to do it? So, but until that point, Madam uh, City Clerk, if you can read the name and the address of the folks that have communicated. Sure, and I apologize if I misspeak on the names. I have Sarah Bieber at 419 Elm Street South in Moorhead, speaking to the Woodlawn Point. And I also have Michael Carbone also speaking to that. And that is 701 First Street South in Moorhead. Any other uh, mailings, electronic communications that have been we received regarding this particular item? I'll make a note that I do believe there has been, at 321, we received a email from a Rick Hall. Uh, address is 417 9th, South 9th Street in Moorhead. Other than that, I don't think I've received any communications, but that should make the record clear. Madam City Manager, have you received any other? I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. No, I believe that is, those are the three we received. Okay. And then, Councilmember Duran, I did see your hand up. Um, it's now down, but now it's back up. So if you want to speak on this, please feel free. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I, I kind of went back and forth. Do I want to... Do I want to say anything or not, or just wait until we were in executive session? But I, I just I wanted to say thank you to Delray for bringing up the uh, the power plant study and that document and how important that document was to that neighborhood. Um, and it is a a piece of work that we need to uh, keep handy when we are looking at options for that area. Uh, that is a, a, I've said this in the past and I'll continue to say it over and over, that's a, a neighborhood that has had a lot of things taken away from it. Um, and they don't need the that beautiful view taken away as well. So I, I you know, I, I, I was a part of the, uh, the, the Japanese garden group that studied that project and we tried to get that done, but unfortunately that fell through. Um, but the neighborhood, um, has expressly stated they, they want to see that, that area there put to public use uh, and not, um, you know, not, not private development. So um, that's all I, I wanted to say. And I, I was happy to hear that uh, Del Rey was, you know, former Mayor Del Rey was, was uh, calling in to remind us that that document exists and, and is worth a, a, a review again. Thank you, Councilmember Duran. Uh, is there any, uh, I don't know, uh, Mr. LaPointe, you're uh, sitting there. Is there anything you wanted to add uh, to this particular 
item before we move forward? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I'll be brief. I, I think uh, a lot of comments were already said. I think from our downtown master plan process, we obviously developed a scope and work in partnership with the city of Moorhead, the Moorhead Economic Development Authority, uh, as well as the downtown Moorhead Inc. board. So that scope did include a, a, a draft, a written draft of the request for proposal or a request for qualifications. Um, in light, that doesn't mean we ultimately have to go out for a request for proposal or RFQ. Um, but obviously the, the work of engagement that we've done, I will note that um, the Stantec team did an excellent job in partnership with a lot of different community partners and, and really hitting record numbers of engagement for Stantec's platform that's worldwide. We are being uh, recognized worldwide now for how much engagement we did, uh, the diversity that we did as well as including families and stations for kids, et cetera. So, um, I am proud of the work that we have. Obviously, we can't get to everyone, and there's always other ways we can improve upon to get to more people. Um, but uh, those documents that were mentioned, I, I will note, they are a part of uh, our planning process, so they have been reviewed. They are uh, summarized within the, the new downtown master plan that will be finalized later this summer. Um, so happy to have further conversation, but again, this is a, a choice of the, the mayor and the council of, of what to do with the city-owned property. and. We're obviously just uh, bringing forward engagement that we, we've collected through the downtown master planning process. Thank you, Mr. LaPointe. <clears throat> and uh, any other council members wish to be heard? Uh, council member Dahlquist, your hand is up. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanna remind everyone too that there was an apartment building that was on the property that is north of uh, Fifth Avenue. And um, so that building was torn down, um, which was, uh, I don't know how many units there were, but it was affordable housing, so we lost those. Um, and so we need to be very careful what we replace that spot with. And I also wanna thank uh, all the Collins and the uh, people who are sending in some opinions in the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Dahlquist. Any other Council Members wish to be heard? Okay, I wanna take a brief moment. Um, I wanted to just do uh, some quick follow-up here. Because uh, <clears throat> I know that in executive session, uh, the public doesn't get to necessarily hear all the robust dialogue that uh, takes place. And so we are, as a Council, sensitive to that. Uh, there are some obviously some legal things that we cannot discuss, uh, but it's not to hide anything from you. It's there's just a process, and it's the process that we have to uh, follow. Um, I do want to be, I'll try to be as brief and succinct as possible, but I do want folks to know what your leadership um, is all about because, again, uh, to Ms. Harden's letter, you don't have to apologize, Ms. Harden, uh, if you're still listening, uh, for. I guess to quote you the uh, strong uh, language in the letter because we want people to be passionate about their 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 neighborhoods that's not a problem I mean, as a city council we have to be accountable to every single person uh that's within our our uh, city and so don't ever apologize for that i think it was a very well written letter i think you talked about your passion for your neighborhood and we want to have every resident feel that way about their neighborhoods um i will say However, I need to take a little bit of the language and just kind of break it down so that people are clear. Uh, the only, the major concern that I had is that uh, I think it, 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 it's when one of the few, parag uh, the lower paragraphs where, uh, paraphrasing where the council, the we, should be making decisions that elevate and prioritize the needs of those in our community who face economic, social, and racially driven disparities. Um, I, I, I hope, and maybe we need to work better about connecting, because I honestly believe in talking with a lot of our council members, we are all united in making decisions that address each and every one of those disparities. I know that everyone sitting up here, their heart's in the right place, and that uh, each individual sitting up here on the dais has, has a passion uh, and is aware 
of those disparities and how we should as a city within our own specific wards and holistic, holistically take an approach to how we do that. Um, I think for every individual that sits up here, I can probably state their mission because I've had one-on-ones with them and I should have more, more frequent one-on-ones with them, but they each bring something to the table to address everything of which you're speaking of within your uh, letter. So please accept my, my apologies if uh, we have not been as, I guess, direct as far as communicating what those passions and, and how we look to make policy decisions to address those. With that being said, before we go into executive, I want people to kind of understand what the major decisions council ha has to make tonight. First and foremost, if we're looking at addressing equity as a whole, equity looks different. We want to have policies to address these disparities, but here's the situation. New Americans, immigrants, and people from lower or historically disadvantaged socioeconomic levels want to have more access to affordable housing. They want, they want to eliminate food insecurity. And they also want to address transportation, uh, uh, communication, connect connectivity with the uh, city. So each person sitting up here believes in that and being resilient. So I think these words resonate with them, people who are sitting here. But here's the bigger issue. If we don't diversify our commercial tax base and we keep pushing property tax onus on our on our residents, we can't have necessarily affordable housing because we don't want to price individuals out of living within our city because we want individuals who are residents here to realize the American dream. What we're sitting here on is probably one of the most, from what my understanding is, from what Mr. LaPointe has told us, this property has a high interest from local, regional, and maybe even outside the regional developers that want to see what they can do with this property. So the city through, well, DMI has had a number of opportunities to engage with citizens in order for us to make those policy decisions that reflect the bigger picture about how to address the equity or the inequity uh, that currently exists with people that sit within our city. So please be rest assured that we are balancing the interests of the people who live in, live in the Woodlawn Point neighborhood, but also taking in a bigger picture approach about how do we keep the neighborhood the way people want it to be, but also taking and making holistic policy decisions to address the fact that we need to diversify our residential and our commercial tax bases so that people have easier access to what we want in our city, which is more businesses, more residents, more freedom to operate, easier transportation and access. So when we go in here, we don't always agree. Uh, we don't rubber stamp anything that comes through here, but you need to know that we're having those conversations and at the heart of each individual sitting up here, we are looking to be as transparent and as thought provoking about how we address the inequities as much as possible. So thank you everyone who has emailed, called, uh, or written in regarding the Woodlawn, Woodlawn Point situation. Thank you. Then we'll move on to item, unless there's any council members that wish to be heard. Then we'll move on to item number, I believe it looks like nine. It does not have an asterisk, so we need to move on to approval of licenses slash permits or hyphen permits. Oh, that's on consent? Okay, I did not see the asterisk. So I just want to make sure. Oh, under A. I got to flip the page. There we go. My bad. I have number 10. Consider actions relating to emergency ordinance number 2020-07 in ordinance to amend emergency ordinance 2020-01. 
So, Mr. Mayor, our city attorney will be here any second, and it would be best if he could speak to that because he's responding to what the council asked um, last meeting. So perhaps you could go to number 11, and Lisa Bodie could give the update for legislation, and then you go back to 10. Okay, not a problem. We'll move on to item number 11, Minnesota Legislative Session Update and Professional Services Agreement for Legislative Advocacy. Hey, can you hear me? Yep, sure can. Okay. You, well, when uh, when I was preparing materials for tonight's meeting last week, I was really hoping that I'd have so much new information to bring you today because the legislature was um, in special session at that time and they uh, a, a left adjourned from um, their special session in the early, early hours of Saturday morning. And so um, I'll, I'll just backtrack a little bit. Uh, Council or uh, City Manager Volkers has given you a couple of updates thus far on the regular session that adjourned on May 18th and the disruptions of COVID-19 and the, um, the lack of agreement on a bonding bill. And uh, unfortunately, the special session did not result in a bonding bill. It did also did not uh, develop a distribution plan for the federal CARES funding that um, local governments are um, expecting. And uh, the, a lot of the debate got um, embroiled in discussions on police reform in Minnesota and rebuilding neighborhoods damaged by arson and looting after the May 25th killing of, of George Floyd by a Minneapolis police officer. The Coalition of Greater Minnesota Cities um, called the end of the session a train wreck. <laughs> and uh, it uh, that that headline made national news, actually. I think it was on the in the New York Times. And that's unfortunate. Um, we um, where we're at right now is there's no confirmation of a second special session to address the unfinished business of 2020 and Minnesota's growing budget deficit. Um, uh, as far as the bonding proposals, we do still hold out some hope that there will be another special session and that a bonding bill will get passed. The, um, the bonding proposal put forth by the Senate during the special session was the smaller of the proposals. And that proposal did include $8.5 million for Clay County Transfer Station and $62 million for the 11th Street underpass, which, you know, so we can still hold out some level of optimism that if there is a bonding bill, we have some projects well positioned within, within the project. Um, uh, the, the bill passed by the Senate also included $18 million for statewide flood mitigation, which is far short of fully addressing Moorhead's needs or that of the FM diversion when you consider needs across the state. Um, and it did not include funds for the Moorhead Community and Aquatic Center. Um, so where we're at now, um, Governor Walz's peacetime emergency authority extends 30 days again to July 12th. And Govern, uh, Governor Walls has the authority to determine the CARES Act funds without calling the legislature back into session. The latest distribution plan that we've seen indicates that Moorhead would receive about $3.3 million, which is a sizable sum and could help us um, in addressing the expenditures that the city's incurred to address COVID-19. And we're exploring guidance on eligible uses of other fund, uh, uh, other sources of uh, other ways we can use that money. And we have expressed to our legislators that the timing of release of those funds is really important to developing a um, a an appropriate spending plan that best makes use of the resources for both municipal and community purposes by the December 30th, 2020 deadline. Um, and uh, noted within the communication for tonight's meeting um, is the changes to the state budget. Um, the state's gone from a surplus in February to a deficit of $2.4 billion. I'd say this is an uncertain time to be, uh, to, to be blunt and that we would be 
very pleased with funding for the transfer station and the underpass and that we also have programs in place that we want to remain in place and that um, it's very important that we uh, work to keep such as the border city enterprise zone funding and the disparity reduction credit which keeps commercial property taxes at a competitive level uh, through a state paid credit that costs the state nearly 20 million dollars so um, with with that i can uh, pause for questions or i can give you more information about the request for council action for tonight um, to extend an agreement a professional services agreement for legislative advocacy with scott hutchins um mayor jed what would you prefer should i pause for questions oh, make sure my mic is on here uh, sure, that's not a problem. Yeah, uh, do any council members have any uh, questions regarding this? I see no hands. Oh, wait, council member Hendrickson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So the transfer station and the uh, 11th Street underpass are both passed the Senate bill, the bonding bill. Well. Right? Yes and no. I mean, they they were included in their bill, but the bill, you know, the, there was no agreement reached. So they will, you know, there's nothing saying that that will continue to be the case. But okay. we're optimistic. No, it's, so the governor hasn't announced if he's going to call a second special session yet. Correct. Council Member Hendrickson, that's correct. Okay. I'm, well, and you all know this, I'm glad to see the transfer station, you know, is leave, remain in that bill. So, you know, hopefully, and 11th Street underpass is really needed too, part of our infrastructure, both crucial infrastructure projects with the city of Moorhead. So, you know, let's, let's pray, calls a second special session, we can get to work on that. So, and thanks for your work on that, Lisa, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member Hendrickson. We'll now pass over to Council Member Watson Curry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Lisa. Um, I also want to maintain optimism as well. Uh, is there any interest or appetite um, from the city to uh, write a letter or do something to, to encourage the governor to call another special session? I would say, um, you know, that, that the, those feelings have been expressed widely. Um, I'm not sure how impactful it would be, but it, you know, it, I suppose it, it can't certainly can't hurt. I think that um, the <clears throat> that there will need to be. It's really a matter of the uh, the uh, legislative leaders coming together and agreeing upon what will be included. I just think that. There's, there's a lot of forces trying to tie all of these things together, the bonding bill, the CARES Act, and police reform. And that I think, you know, maybe a little cooling off period will help. I, I, there, but there is definitely a sense of urgency on some of these matters um, that would really, in, in some ways, help us out of some of the economic issues that we have going on. The, the CARES Act funding, for, you know, in large part, but also the bonding bill to get people back to work. So I, I don't know if that answers your question, Council Member Watson Curry, but um, you know, I, I, I think that there is that all those pressures are at work right now. Is that Thanks, Lisa. Um, pardon me. Um, I, I had seen the Coalition of Greater Minnesota Cities is putting pressure on the CARES Act funding in particular, so I was just curious if either LMC or CGMC are um, advocating for that as well. They absolutely are. Okay, great. Thank you for your work. Thank you, Councilmember Watson Curry, for your comments, and then we'll pass over to Councilmember Hendrickson. Your hand is back up. And it's down now, JJ, I apologize. <clears throat> no worries. Uh, does anyone else uh, have any uh, questions or comments at all? Okay. Uh, 
Ms. Bodhi, uh, do you have anything else you want to add? I do. Um, within your packet is a resolution um, in which we are requesting this um, city manager has recommended at, uh, that um, Scott Hutchins, who was our um, legislative lobbyist for more than 30 years, um, and as noted, when the border city pro uh, programs were developed, and Scott uh, served after his retirement in 2017, Scott served as the city's sole lobbyist in 2018. And after I became governmental affairs director, he mentored me in 2019. And we kept him on as we worked through some of the significant projects that we were working on in 2020 at a reduced rate. And I did take over the lead in 2020. Um, but there hasn't been a, a, a real full session in, you know, in 2020. I mean, it, it, it had, it ended so oddly and abruptly. And uh, we do feel that there is value for Mr. Hutchins to continue services, um, albeit on a reduced rate and at a reduced price for the next 18 months, um, receiving $18,000 in compensation for that 18 months versus $3,000 a month that we paid him this past legislative session. Um, and while there is usually little legislative activity during the summer and the fall periods, um, we do believe there will be additional special sessions during the off season to address some of these emergency policy and budget issues. And we do have important programs that we really want to protect. And I think having that um, capacity and that wisdom and history built over more than 30 years would be helpful to have on our team. And we wanted to bring that forward to you um, within, uh, with a council resolution asking for a continuation of that agreement for the next 18 months. Uh, thank you, Ms. Bodie. Uh, does that bring about any uh, questions or thoughts from anyone? Councilmember Seldivold. And so why is he that important now or in the future? I would say that that a lot of the information that he has, it's not about who you know. It, it's a, it's about who you know and what you know. And um, Scott's value has been, you know, proven over time. He is researching things for us. I meet with him weekly. Um, he has institutional memory that, frankly, I just don't have yet. And so it is very helpful to have him as part of the team. He cares deeply about Moorhead and has worked hard on the city's behalf um, to bring creative solutions to legislative problems that Moorhead faces that are in some ways like no other place in Minnesota. And Council Sosable, uh, just in case you want to respond, I think uh, Do you, uh, um, do you fear that uh, Moorhead will be uh, some of our our border res, our legislation some will help balance the budget do you think they'll be taken away from us is that a fear uh, i'll answer uh that, that's okay uh ms Bodie, one second i think council member or <laughs> adam city manager I'm getting all my stuff here wanted to follow up with council member Seljavold's prior comment and, maybe and this, this one uh, and this one okay yep. thank you council member Seljavold, um i will I give you the same kind of response I gave the mayor when he asked me those questions also, by the way. So um, a couple things about, let's start with the border city stuff, which is, is extremely critical to the city of Moorhead. Our businesses, by receiving that difference in property tax from our 3% or 2 point something to 1.6, so we're the same as North Dakota. The fact that the state pays that nets about 20 or $25 million, Derek, is that about right? Yep, 20 or $25 million to our businesses 
any change or loss, and that would be a critical, critical hit to our businesses. So the I'll start with that. So the and there is some talk about that with the upcoming budget concerns. There has been a lot of discussion and questions about border cities and why do we get this money and we don't get it right our businesses do but but should that be looked at so there is a lot of conversation happening about that so that's number one number two is Scott Hutchins has been an advocate for this city for a very very long time and I can honestly say and I did not know this when I started being city manager but I can honestly say he has been more influential than anybody else, in my opinion, um, as far as our success with bonding bills. Moorhead has been extremely um, successful in getting bonding money for our infrastructure projects and other projects and our flooding. And while Bob Zimmerman, Dr. Zimmerman, does a lot on the flooding, Scott has, has built those relationships, know who to talk to. He's an excellent lobbyist for Moorhead and he should be credited in my opinion for a lot of the success. So we did hire him as Lisa said last year to help Lisa kind of acclimate still to her new job as a lobbyist. She still has not had a full session and he was supposed to help her through this session. Well, the session didn't really happen. Really small, you know, a very, very small part. Lisa still hasn't had her full training. And so it is your city manager's recommendation of for our city employee to have that training and Scott is in a unique position to give her that training. That's why it's on the agenda tonight. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Modi, I'm not sure if you wanted to follow up with anything based on uh, Madam City Manager's comments, and then we will give uh, Council Member Seljavold a chance to uh, add any other thoughts or questions. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any additional questions that you might have. Okay. Well, Mr. Mayor, I, I, I'm not questioning Scott Hutchins' uh, qualifications. I, I've known him for years, and I know how, how good of a job he, he's done. It's just it, I'm looking at it as the budget item is what I'm looking at, it, and not his qualifications at all, not at all. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilmember Seljavold. I, I wholeheartedly agree. Um, I uh, When this was brought to my attention, uh, exactly, you're right on, on spot, and I think uh, as a council we have to look at that. Um, though I don't have a vote in this situation, I think my inkling would, would be if it's worth protecting what we have already so that it doesn't get taken away, it might definitely be worth uh, the value to our uh, city to do that. So again, uh, no question about his credentials at all. I do see uh, Council Member Carlson, your hand is up, and then we'll go back to Council Member Hendrickson. Council Member Carlson. Um, I was going to move to uh, approve the professional service agreement for legislative advocacy um, with Scott Hutchins. Duran seconds. So we have a motion, has been seconded. Any further discussion? Uh, Councilmember Hendrickson, I see your hand is up. This will be that time for you if you wish to chime in. Well, I was going to make a motion, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, but I've seen Scott. I've worked with Scott down at the Capitol, and I've seen him in action. He does a really good job. So I was going to make the motion, but um, Councilmember Carlson beat me to it, and Duran beat me to the second. So that's all I have. <laughs> all right, no worries. Any uh, further discussion? Madam City Clerk. Dahlquist. Yes. Watson Curry. Yes. Carlson? Yes. Durand? Yes. White? Yes. Seljavold? Yes. Hendrickson? Yes. Lindos? Yes. Motion carries. Then we'll go back to item number 10 since uh, City Attorney Shockley is here. And again, uh, for those at home, to consider actions relating to emergency ordinance number 2020-07, in ordinance to amend emergency ordinance 2020-01. Mr. Shockley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the Moorhead City Council. Uh, as per the direction at uh, to the city council meeting two weeks ago, we prepared an amendment to the emergency ordinance regarding uh, the conduct of uh, open meetings uh, during the COVID situation. 
Uh, the primary change to the ordinance has occurred. Uh, it would be in the packet, page number 19 and 20, but it's in section 3.2 of the ordinance. Uh, the ordinance has been amended to state. Uh, furthermore, city boards and commissions may meet to discuss any meeting agenda topics by telephone or other electronic means. It was striking the essential language uh, that we had before. Uh, previously, the ordinance had in place uh, that only essential business would be conducted or those items which would trigger the 60-day rule in Minnesota. I can certainly answer any questions, but it's a very straightforward ordinance amendment uh, that will allow uh, boards and commissions, uh, even with non-essential business now, to meet virtually or electronically. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Shockley, for that overview. Uh, Councilmember Hendrickson, I see your hand up. I apologize again, Mr. Mayor. It was, I forgot to put it back down. That's all right. Uh, any uh, questions or uh, comments regarding this matter? Okay. And then, uh, Mr. Shockley, can we take uh, both of these here, A and B, together? Yes. Thank you. So I'll entertain a motion uh, for adoption. That's moves approval. Watson Curry, second. Linda and Watson Curry. Gotcha. Any further discussion? No. All right. Madam City Clerk. White. Yes. Seljavold. Yes. Hendrickson. Aye. Lindos. Yes. Dahlquist. Yes. Watson Curry. Yes. Yes. Carlson. Yes. And Durand. Yes. Motion carries. Then I'll move us down to item number 14, which is a resolution to approve professional services agreement, uh, the I-94 Water Tower Artist. Who's taking this one? Madam City Manager? Um, am I or is Lisa Bodie taking this? I I'm on and ready if you want me okay. to. Go for it, Lisa. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So thank you very much, our uh, Mayor Judd and City Manager Volkers. We have a professional services agreement for the I-94 water tower artists. And um, council may remember that way back in January of 2019, the city entered into an agreement with Moorhead Public Service for the development of the artistic component for the I-94 water tower. And it, um, the, the visibility of this particular water tower, we've had art on the other water, applied to the other water towers, but the visibility of this one um, meant that the city really wanted to take the lead on the art development. And so we entered into a disagreement with MPS and we have a committee that is comprised of city and MPS elected leaders and appointed officials to guide the art development project or process. And uh, Council Member Duran, Council Member Hendrickson, and Council Member Seljibald all serve on that art development um, committee. And we solicited, there, there was a delay in the, uh, the timeline for the painting of the tower, which gave us an extra year. Um, to wait to call for the artist, but we did that right before COVID-19 hit. And, but the call for artists was widely distributed in late January, early February of 2020. We received 22 applications for consideration. Um, the committee narrowed it down to six finalists, interviewed those, and did some follow-up. And the group that has been selected is the Churchill Group. And it's a team of three people, and they are really excited. And I think what um, was really a strong point for them was their citizen participation element. We've let them know that we want to create the art with the community, not just for the community, and that we hope to use the city's grand narrative and a Moorhead Proud theme and begin work with the community very soon. Um, we have uh, the, the 
This is part of the strategic plan um, that it focuses on identity and infrastructure. Um, so we are using this project to you know, build upon Moorhead's identity to build a community that's engaged, energized and optimistic and looks out for one another. And that we clearly define who we are at our core, our unique, enduring and differentiating, differentiating attributes. We um, are excited that this huge work of public art will be viewed by perhaps 40,000 people every day that drive by on I-94. So it really is important to the city. And the Churchill Group is excited to get going. And um, we, the, the art development uh, will cost 20,000, or excuse me, $10,000 from the 2020 public art budget. MPS has um, agreed to contribute 285 to the art application, and we, um, it, you know, depending upon the type, the proposals that come forward, we may need some additional budget assistance. Um, but we, in the 2021 budget, but right now we're just asking for uh, funds to secure the art development with uh, the Churchill Group. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you, Ms. Bodie, again. Uh, we have uh, Sarah Watson Curry, council member, with her hand up. Nope. Thank you. Yep. Sorry, I always have a question. Um, I was just curious if you could, well, where is the Churchill Group based? And um, how will the art development process um, vary from our previous water towers? And maybe the council members who were reps on this could walk me through it a little bit. Thank you. So to answer your question, council member Watson Curry, the, the, um, the Churchill group, um, Michelle Churchill lives in Fargo and I believe attended one of the, I can't remember if she attended MSUM or M state. I I'd have to look back on, on her resume. Um, she's UND. UND. Okay. Sorry about that. And she, it, it's a two sisters and I believe a brother-in-law that make, that comprise the group. And uh, so, so they're, they're not specifically Moorhead based, but they're, they're within our region. Thank you for that, Lisa. Um, just as a follow-up, will the art development process be um, reminiscent of what we've seen for other water towers in the community? Thank you for that question. The answer is that it will look a little bit different because of COVID-19. Um, we will, and we did ask them to address that within their plans. And so they have an active engagement process that they are planning to do. Um, with the community, but it, it will not involve, you know, the in-person public meetings, but we have, um, you know, we have high hopes that they'll be able to reach a, a large number of people. Even when we issued the call for art, we had huge engagement on Facebook with that and people envisioning what the water tower could or should look like. So. I'm really excited for what we can do with the community. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Watson Curry, uh, Councilmember Duran. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, Councilmember Watson Curry, I, I I was a part of this group. Um, and the one thing that really stuck out with the Churchill group was that they had a, a three member team and each member had their expertise. And the sister who I believe is currently living in Bismarck works for their park and rec department as their outreach person, <clears throat> their community engagement person. And so they, you know, she has, you know, quite an extensive background in and doing out, outreach and and um, you know gaining public participation and whatnot in different projects. Um, the brother-in-law, I believe, is 
an electrical engineer or something of that nature. He works out in Montana, I believe, uh, for their utility. And so his area of expertise was the lighting and how they could d design something using um, you know, specific types of lighting. And then the other sister is the more of the art and the graphic design piece. Uh, and they just had a very, very comprehensive approach to everything that we asked them to do. Um, and, and being this water tower is on I-94, we wanted a little bit different of an approach. We thought it would be helpful to look, um, I guess, not differently, but in a different way, but doing the same thing uh, because we drive by that water tower so fast that you can't really stop and enjoy the artwork. So it has to be something catchy and has to get, grab your attention for only a few seconds. Whereas the other neighborhood water towers, you could get more detailed. And the artists that we used for those water towers uh, were very good at specific detailing and, and getting the heart of the neighborhood, um, you know, some of the history. And that type of artwork would have been a little bit difficult to put on the 94 tower because of the speed at which people are driving by. Um, so we expect this one to be a little bit different. And we believe that the public engagement will be more than just Facebook uh, and social media. These, you know, the one sister, the one Churchill sister is, you know, her job is essentially doing that. So uh, we were, I don't want to speak for the whole group, but I, I think it's safe to say that we were all pretty impressed with how comprehensive their package was. That bring, thank you, uh, Council Member Duran. Does that bring out any, were you done? I wasn't sure if you were pausing for, okay. Does anyone else uh, wish to add any comments based on Council Member Duran's comments about the history? Okay, thank you for sharing. Uh, Ms. Bodie, is there anything else you wanted to add? Not unless there's further questions, thank you. Okay, not a problem. Any other uh, questions, folks? Um, if not, I'll entertain a motion. Council Member move. Lindos moves approval of the resolution to approve professional services agreement. Sell the vote second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All right, Madam City Clerk. Lindos? Yes. Hendrickson? Aye. Seljabold? Yes. White? Yes. Durand? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Watson Curry? Yes. And Dahlquist? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, folks. That brings us to item number 15, city manager recruitment. Next steps. I'm gonna presume uh, Mr. City Attorney. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we, uh, I think the last uh, uh, council meeting, the council tabled the issues that I had presented other than uh, appointing uh, Mr. Dan Molly as acting city manager. Uh, and thus, I think the city council still has a couple of decisions to make. Uh, I guess the first would be, uh, do you want to employ an interim city manager? And then the second is uh, the search, uh, how you want to conduct a search or interview process for the city manager, uh, future city manager, not the current one, <laughs> who won't be here for a few more days. <laughs> Thanks for the clarity on that one, Mr. Shockley. Uh, so with that, I'll open it up. Um, uh, well, the first hand I saw pop up was Councilmember Durand, and then I have Councilmember Dahlquist. So we'll pass over to you, Councilmember Durand. Uh, my bad, I forgot to put my hand down. Oh, okay, no worries. Councilmember Dahlquist, and then after you, Councilmember Lindas. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I believe uh, Attorney Shockley was not here when um, Delray Williams had called in and gave a recommendation. 
Could you recap that and see if that is an option that we could put in with the other options? Okay, Do you remember not, what Delray Williams had said? I believe generally, I don't want to put words uh, in her mouth, but I think the she was asking whether or not the option was to promote uh, from within, if I'm not mistaken, or uh, not, in, not do an interim. Not do an interim. I believe so, is what she said, but again, I, I, I don't. It was something about she believed the interim mayor was not um, as successful as they had hoped last time, and if there was a way to skip that step. So uh, certainly the council, the, this is very much within your discretion. Uh, the rules you do have to follow are employment law related. Uh, so you could certainly not hire an interim city manager and immediately proceed to the city manager uh, search or hiring process. With respect to uh, promotion, uh, if you do an internal process, you will need to have uh, some type of hiring, uh, hiring process so that you preserve those uh, uh, rules regarding pay equity and making sure that you are providing all employees an opportunity to interview for internally posted positions. Uh, but this is, this is one of those times that the city council has a great amount of discretion in how you wanna proceed, but you certainly do not need to have an interim city manager. Does that answer your question, council member Dahlquist? Yes, it does. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Then we'll go to council member Lindos, then Carlson, and Durand. So Council Member Lindos. If you're talking, we can't hear you. No, I'm, I'm double clicking the, the unmute button. Um, right. Thank you, Mayor Judd. No worries. Um, uh, so uh, I guess the only thing I was going to speak to was um, having thought through this and trying to um, weigh the relative pros and cons um, it seems to me that doing an internal search and um, trying to build up our um, talent from within the city of Moorhead, from the people that actually um, uh, are, are coming from and understand our city at this particular moment in time makes a lot of sense. And so I'm in favor of doing an internal search. And if that doesn't work, we still have the option of opening it up and having an external search. Um, so, you know, that I think is uh, a, a a fairly faster, straightforward. Um, I haven't actually cognated through the process um, I, I, prior to, um, I don't know, 45 minutes ago. Um, I, I, was, I was just thinking that it's, it's smarter to get an interim um, person in just to, to make it a clearer process and make sure, especially if you have multiple internal candidates, that there is um, equity um, for all of those involved. And so I'm still leaning towards that, um, but someone might be able to sway me um, one way or another. Thank you, Council Member Lindos. Not a problem. And we'll uh, be sure to, we, uh, we want to get this right, so we want to make sure everyone's got a voice to be heard. Uh, Madam City Clerk, will you please set a timer for us for, let's go 30 minutes and we'll check back in. <laughs> we got to hold our feet to the fire, folks. So it's decision time. <laughs> I think he's on mute. All right. I, I, I see you, Council Member Lindos. It's all good. All right, Council Member Carlson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I was wondering if John, uh, with uh, City Attorney Shockley, could just speak to some of the legality issues that could be involved with. Um, have there been other cities where a, a interim, an internal candidate has been appointed as interim and then later hired? And if there are other internal candidates, what is the transparency issues or legality issues involved um, with doing that? Um, 
And has there been any fallout in other cities where that has um, not been, I don't know what I'm exactly trying to say, but the fallout has been bad. So, Mr. Mayor, uh, Council uh, Member Carlson, uh, I think I'll unpack your question a little bit. So your, your first question relates to uh, what is the impact of hiring an internal interim city manager and then going through a hiring process that's either internal, external. If that candidate that's internal and is looking at that city manager position, um, I'll start first from a kind of a search perspective. It, it makes that search much more difficult because a lot of people may not apply for the position thinking that the interim city manager, uh, they're, they're the candidate that's likely to get it. Uh, so if you do hire an interim city manager, it's typically better to hire an external interim city manager uh, that is not interested in the position. Uh, or if you feel that you want to hire an interim city manager internally, you want to make sure that you have very clear interview uh, uh, protocols and make sure that you're following that process with an eye towards how is that going to work with your city manager hiring process. Um, with res I think the second part of your question was what are the legalities regarding the internal uh, hiring process? and. Uh, just to be frank, I will I will suggest that on the intern, when you promote from within, that is a very positive thing to do, in that uh, you're building your leadership internally. But keep in mind there is value within the interview process. Um, I have worked with other clients that have just had a single interview process internally, and they I think in retrospect may have liked to have some additional candidates to supplement the pool. I think within the interview process, uh, a council can learn a lot about a candidate. Um, you can set up the interview process to include mock uh, press conferences, mock emergency situations, and see how that person, that leader performs under different situations. And so, it. I, I say this a lot, but this is really your decision as a council how you want to conduct the process. But if if you don't want to hire the search firm and you want to have a, a less expensive interview process, it's not necessarily a bad idea to have both internal candidates apply and maybe do like a, a small search where you would at least post the position on different websites like LMCIT and LinkedIn and maybe reach out to some of the other uh, sites where city managers would look. You're not going to get the advantage of a search firm that may be able to contact uh, city managers that are looking to transition either to a larger city or a smaller city because oftentimes uh, city managers, because of the, the politics, frankly, that are involved in it, um, they may be thinking about either moving up to a larger city or moving down to a smaller city depending on where they are in their career. And a search firm has those. Um, oftentimes they'll reach out to city managers that are working to see, you know, just ask them how they're doing, how do they feel like they're advancing in their career. And so they have that pool of applicants that may not otherwise apply. So I, I think I, hopefully I answered the question, but. Yes. Thank you very much, City Attorney. Um, Mr. Mayor, where I'm at with this um, is that I would be um, in favor of doing an, an internal search, um, but also have directing our HR to do um, an external search um, with League of Minnesota Cities, um, League of Greater Minnesota, um, LinkedIn, our papers around here. Um, and then going outside of the city and appointing an interim city manager, um, perhaps from the list provided by City Attorney Shockley. Uh, it is my understanding that the last time when a city manager um, position was open, the person that was hired as an interim was, I believe, only 
available two days a week. And I don't think that that is sufficient for a city the size of Moorhead. And so I would be um, advocating for having one, an interim that is at least four to five days a week. Okay. Thank you, Council Member Carlson, uh, for your words. And keep in mind, folks, we can always extend the discussion if we need to. I just want to make sure that we're on point with what we're trying to get towards here at the uh, end. So uh, with that, Council Member Durand and then Council Member Seljavold and then Council Member Dahlquist. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, a quick question, uh, Attorney Shockley. We don't need an interim person, correct? We can, um, our acting city manager can act as the interim, correct? Uh, that is correct. You're acting city manager as long as uh, I would be very clear on the scope that, and authority that you are giving him. Uh, as in an acting position, he may not feel like he's fully, has full scope. Uh, okay. So I think if that was a decision of the council, you'd want to make clear that your intention as appointing him as acting is that uh, he is truly the acting uh, city manager with all of the scope and authority of the city manager. Okay. Um, you know, I, I was a, a part of the council last time we went through a hiring process and uh, the interim that we had at the time uh, as former Ma city mayor uh, Delray Williams said, it wasn't the greatest experience. Um, so reflecting, you know, the last couple of weeks and having conversations with people, um, I don't, I don't know that we need to spend the money in going to get an interim person when we have the leadership here that we could use. Um, and then I guess I would say, let's look within for a permanent position, but maybe uh, expand um, to include a, a limited region. Um, it's always good to look, you know, somebody might, you know, close by might surprise us and, you know, throughout the interview process, but I don't know that I would go nationwide. Um, definitely look internally, but open it up to a, a smaller region, I guess is, is, is where I'm leaning right now. Thank you, Council Member Duran. Uh, Council Member Seljavold, you're up next, and then Dahlquist, and I think Carlson, your hands up. Yes, we uh, we have an acting, uh, we will have an acting city manager. I would suggest we just stay that route, give him authority. Uh, I believe we need to look outside. We don't have to look far. I mean, we're, if if we do it, we get to decide who we get to bring in for an interview. We don't have to bring in anybody from far away if we don't want to, because one of the things you don't know who's going to um, apply from the outside. Um, so you might get somebody that you're really surprised at and not really are qualified and they're just looking for a change or they're they're in hot water somewhere else and they this would be a better fit for them. So um, I think you should do it. Don't fear an interim. And, um, and then we're going to get internal and we're going to get some external and we'll decide who we're going to bring in. Thanks. Thank you, Council Member Seljavold. Uh, Council Member Dahlquist, your hand is up. Thank you, Mayor. I guess um, I agree with both in some, some situations that uh, if we have our temporary city manager, Mr. Molly, and then do a search. I don't care how far uh, we go outside of the region, but um, I think at this time when we're in emergency situation and we don't know how long or if it'll get extended, it would be nice to have someone that's familiar with um, all the going on in the city already, you know, familiar with the employees that we have in the city, uh, would be better qualified to handle what's going on right now, especially with like being very careful financially. Um, so uh, just omitting the step of an interim and just staying with our temporary 
city manager and then do the search while we have a temporary city manager. It would save us money for the, from the interim. And uh, I agree with uh, council member Seligible that you could have as far reaching um, applications and then you can just screen through who applies. Okay. Thank you, council member Dahlquist. Council member Seligible. Oh, Councilman Seljewold. Down. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. I saw up and down. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Hendrickson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I I'd say this last week too. I think we should just you know have the acting city manager, and I think we should do you know, not hire an interim because I went through the same process as Heidi did and, you know, it was it was okay. It was, I don't know if it, you'd call it successful or not, but, it, it, you know, I think it went okay with the last interim, but I think we have, an, we have an active, we can have an acting city manager right now who knows the system, who's familiar with all the workers. I think that's, that should be good. And when we go to screen applicants, I agree with uh, Council Member Duran, uh, we should look internal too, but I think we can open up to the to region wide, I don't think we should go nationwide. Just you know, and if somebody explained to me what region, I mean, what would make up the region? But um, with regional applicants, I think that'd be be a good thing. But um, you know, what 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 is a region? And I, I'd probably turn it over to uh, Mr. Shockley. I mean, could would the council decide what the region is or not? Well, uh, great question. Yeah, we, we could certainly decide what the region is. It, if the general direction of the council is to have a, a what I'll call a, a hybrid in, internal slash external search, uh, what I would propose is that you would authorize me to go ahead, work with uh, our labor attorney and uh, the HR infrastructure for posting uh, the job. And then we could bring back uh, the job description where we intend to post it, and then a, a skeleton of what the interview process would look like. And then in two weeks, you could approve uh, the job description and getting it posted and when applications would be received. Um, and then you'd have some time to think through what the, the skeleton of the process for hiring would look like, because I'm assuming we'd want probably 45 to 60 days to receive applications for a city manager spot. Um, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna look at, uh, for direction from the current city manager, if how long do you think a city manager position should be posted for? I think, in my experience, somewhere in between the 30 and 60, so maybe 45 days should be plenty. Okay, so that, and so you'd have some time during that process when we first post it um, to think about, think through the interview process. If that's the way the council would wanna go. I wanna, wanna be very clear, this is not the city attorney deciding how to do this. This is, <laughs> this is the city council's hire, so. Um, thank you, Mr. Shackman, for that. I didn't mean to leave you out, uh, council member selves of old. So you had the same idea, so. But thank you. Thank you, council member Hendrickson. Uh, we still have plenty of time, folks, uh, to discuss. Uh, I think we need to probably vet this out as much as we can. Uh, Councilmember Watson Curry, your hand is up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I also am in support of um, saving, being budget conscious and not hiring an interim. Um, I think we have exemplary staff with the city of Moorhead and um, that they would be able to carry us through any transition. Um, I would also support a search um, internally as well as a limited regional search. Thank you, Councilmember Watson Curry. Uh, Councilmember Hendrickson, I'm not sure if your hand is up because you want to speak again, or is it lasting from? No, I I, I apologize. I forgot to lower it. No, that's okay. Thank you, I don't want to. No, that's, no, no worries. I just want to make sure I'm not leaving anybody out. I think I got called out one time for that, so I don't want to make the same mistake. <laughs> uh, 
we got plenty of time, folks. Uh, again, for the conversations, if anyone has anything they want to add uh, to the discussion. And I'm just throwing it out there because I think I've got a half and half about where people are sitting regarding what they want to do. So if somebody is wanting me to speak, in case I have to break any type of a tie, I can put it out there to say that, um, you know, I think as far as where I'm sitting, I brought up the, uh, the conversation at the uh, last meeting primarily, and I stick to that because of uh, where we're at with our uh, budget uh, process and also, you know, wanting to be fiscally responsible about doing the search. But I also will say that a portion of that, well, I'm gonna say a portion. The second part of that is we're talking about, and again, I've had a bunch of conversations with a lot of folks uh, on the equity and inclusion piece, and we're looking at how hard it is to get law enforcement officers uh, to come to Fargo-Moorhead, generally speaking. And we're looking at a lot of, uh, a lot of issues regarding trying to get folks uh, and more diversity in our hiring. One of the things that was proposed by a lot of entities, at least on the Moorhead and Minnesota side, is that we look at growing our own. Um, and by growing our own, for those uh, communities that wish to live here, uh, they would have, and again, we can talk later about what this looks like, whether it's through scholarships or, or, or you know, somehow making sure that people who choose to live here, who want to live here, have an opportunity to grow within our own community. Um, if they go to college here, they wanna make their home here, raise their family here, uh, maybe that's another aspect of, of diversity and, 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 and making sure that we're going towards those equitable and inclusive outcomes. S circling back to part of where I was going at earlier is if we have, as council members have already stated, strong folks here who have grown, and I'm speaking multiple, because I'm assuming that there may be multiple applicants within um, our city staff that may have an interest in applying. If we're focusing on growing our own and giving those opportunities, that was one of the reasons, another reason why I was considering us think about the fact that we look at internal applicants because if they're working within our city and we've had really exemplary leadership within our staff with our policymakers, we should be able to give first first shot to those that we're preparing to lead. So that was kind of my two-pronged approach about having us rethink this from a, from, from a fiscal standpoint, but also I think from an ethical and maybe just a community standpoint too, that uh, we've got people who've worked in, in our city staff for years they maybe deserve to have a shot if the chance comes up to step up into leadership. So if we have multiple internal candidates, that's a great thing, right? Because it means that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing to groom leaders. So that was my approach. Now, I'll be upfront to tell you, I'm not sure where I'm at with the regional approach and what region looks like. I think we need to be more definitive if we're looking at Red River Valley region, North Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa, South Dakota. If we're looking at doing something above and beyond the internal, or if this is a part of the internal with the region, that's where I need to get more input from you all. Um, so based on that, I see Councilmember Durand has her hand up, I'll defer to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I guess, uh, I don't. Uh, I don't need to to see the regional piece in there. Um, if we go through an internal process and we we don't come to a conclusion on a can on a on a on a person, we can always expand it and open it up at that time. Um, I you know I'm I'm just. Uh, I guess I was trying to be a little bit flexible, but maybe was too flexible. Um, but I'd like to see an internal process done. And if it's a failed search, then we can look, you know, at a smaller region. 
Thank you for that clarity, Councilmember Duran. And I want to be clear: no, no ideas are off the uh, the uh, table. I mean, I, you know, again, I'm I'm I'm, I'm wide open. I just threw it out there last time with those considerations. So no ideas are off the table at all. I mean, if there are council members that wish to have a limited search, and I just need to know what does that look like if, if you're gonna add, for those of you that are looking to go internal plus, I need to know what that plus specifically entails. Uh, or if you're looking at going internal, and if we don't find anything internal, then going regional, I need for you to kind of walk me through that process and spell that out. So thank you. I'm seeing some more hands up. Uh, we'll go with Councilmember Larry Seljavold, and then after that, Councilmember Sarah Watson Curry. I can't hear Councilmember Seljavold if you're speaking. Oh. I'm sorry, my computer froze up if you called on me. No, no, that's okay. Go ahead. You're, you're up. Okay. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I had a panic there when my computer froze. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> well, one of the things I think about looking externally, and then because you don't really know who you're going to get, you can get somebody very qualified who may be very impressive. I, I look at it this way. We, we have a closing date on applicants let's say in 45 days, you can bring in the internal people in the next five days. And then if you're not satisfied, then you go on the sixth and eighth or whatever day out there, then you call in other people. So you are, you're kind of taking care of the internal people right away. And then seeing, having a chance to see what's out there because you just, you just don't know who you're going to get. And I, I, I guess Council Member Linda, so I'm going to use your alma mater as an example. When uh, St. Olaf uh, lost their track coach, they went searching, and lo and behold, the University of Minnesota track coach applied for the job. He went from Division One to Division Three, which is kind of unheard of. So that's kind of my point. You never know who is going to apply that you need to look outside, at least get those people, because you just don't know saying we don't have many great people inside we do but you don't know so thank you well, thank you council member soldier volt before i pass over to you uh council member watson curry i think uh city attorney shockley wants to speak to council member soldier volt's point yeah uh thank you mr mayor one quick point uh i would want to research the issue of if you had a, a hybrid search process if you could close that out to, you know, if you have a step process where you look at internal candidates first, I think if you're advertising a pool, you need to interview from that pool. So you'd want to define what that pool is before, you know, and you like, you couldn't, you couldn't segregate out the internal candidates first, interview them, and then uh, interview the external candidates if that's your pool. I think there's uh, some potential Minnesota pay equity issues in doing that um, that you would you would run into with if you tried to divide up the pool. So I think you'd want to we don't need to check it for sure, but you'd probably want to do an internal hiring process first if you're going to do that, or do a hybrid process. You know, just just define your pool of applicants uh, before you start the process, so you know who you're picking from. Does that bring about anything, uh, Councilmember Seljavold? Do you want to take some time to marinate on that? <laughs> I'm not an expert in human resource, so I, you know, I these things wouldn't have occurred to me. So, yeah. No, that's all good. Neither am I, man. That that's why I want us to talk it through so we can get it right this time. So, not a problem at all. Uh, Councilmember Watson Curry, your hand was up, and I don't see it anymore. But if you wish to be heard, go right ahead. I did. I didn't want to forget it. <laughs> That's all right. Um, uh, so Council Member Seljavold had a compelling example about that um, opportunity to have a regional search. I, I, I guess I'll pull back and say I would prefer us to um, focus on an inter internal hire process first, and then if we decide it's not adequate, then we can cast our net a little bit wider. Um, 
So I think eliminating that hybrid option that um, Attorney Shackley presented. So I would, I, my vote, I'm leaning towards um, an internal posting. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Watson Curry, for your words. Uh, then we'll pass it on to Councilmember Duran. Sorry, sorry, you can scold me. I forgot to take my hand down. No scolding needed. We're not scolding anybody. <laughs> at least regarding this situation. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure if we're where we want to be, but I, but again, I think what I'm hearing is that there are folks that, and then pursuant to Attorney Shockley's comments, uh, the hybrid might be something that me needs more defining, but the internal search, it seems that that's where we're, we're at, is what I'm hearing is the somewhat of a consensus. I, I will say, maybe, I, and, and I don't know if we're at more than one where this would pass, but Council Member Lindos, you give us some insight. I did not mean to interrupt you, Mayor Judd. No, I was, I was, I was just finished. trying to, no worries at all, go right ahead. You're good. Thank you, Mayor Judd. Um, I guess uh, one of the questions I would have, and maybe this is for Attorney Shockley, um, is to clarify exactly um, the pros and cons of having um, no interim and then having the person that is actually our acting um, or interim city manager um, be interested in and apply for the position. How, how do you keep a firewall um, in, in that kind of situation? And so and when I was kind of keeping track, I, I heard a lot of people that didn't want an interim, and I understand, and that's another step. Um, if, I could, if I could minimize the amount of steps, I would do that, but I also want to make sure that I'm, um, the process is equitable and fair to everyone involved, and not putting one person um, in, a, in an awkward situation or in a situation that could potentially be in, intangible um, so, Chuck, I'm shocked if you're able to answer that question potentially. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, I would say that if you make someone an interim city manager and they are within the internal applicant pool, uh, that may that may limit the number of people who would apply for that position because they would see that person as the you know likely to get the position, the top candidate because they're already in that role. And it may also make some uh, subordinate employees a little bit uncomfortable. It, can you imagine if you're the subordinate employee, you apply for it and you get the job and now you're working with somebody that you were, was previously your uh, boss. And so I think that's, that's one, uh, one consideration. I, I would note, I, I understand there's always a desire to promote internally, but I, I did feel that it's important to share with you that uh, I did have a client that uh, only interviewed internally, they hired someone, they were not happy with that person, um, and it didn't, didn't go well. And I think if they would have had a, even a, a process where it's even just regional interview process, they would have had more people compete for that spot in that interview process and competing against those people probably would have shown that uh, those traits about the person that weren't favorable to the governing body. And so it, to me, it's always good to have an interview process and to have some competition put into the process. I think it's through competition and through challenge that you pick uh, probably stronger candidates. Or if you have a strong candidate, they'll learn from the process and when they come out the other end, they are even stronger than when they were start, when you started the process. That sounds uh, fair, Attorney Shockley. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, I think folks, uh, and also I think the bigger picture too, we should consider is we want this process to be very, very fair and transparent um, with as much engagement that we can get uh, from folks in the community. I know that is something that I think is important to uh, all of us. So I think that might be 
also a big consideration as we make this decision moving forward as well. So transparent, the more transparency, the better. And what that looks like, I guess we're gonna have to figure out. If we need more time, we can uh, put it back on. I see a couple hands up. I see Councilmember Carlson, your hand is up. You may go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I know that many of you have mentioned um, budgetary issues. Um, I don't think that we really can put a monetary amount on ensuring transparency and a fair process. Um, I know that one of the advantages to having an interim city manager is that it then provides a fairness to internal candidates. Um, like City Attorney Shockley was saying, it, it doesn't create this unfairness perception that there has just been like a quote unquote chosen person or, or anything along those lines. Um, I also think it's important to remember that City Volker or City Manager Volkers will be leaving us, um, and so that salary um, could be utilized towards paying for an interim city manager. Um, I think that it's very important to try to, like Mayor Judd said, to be as tra transparent as possible and to make sure that it is fair to everybody applying. And I, the other question I had, um, Mr. Mayor and, and City Attorney Shockley, would tonight's decision be first and foremost to determine if we are going to move forward with hiring an internal city manager um, or maintain um, the acting city manager as an interim and then give us a little bit more time to roommate on, it would be an internal, external, I would imagine that the job description is gonna be the same um, and a very similar interview process. So, so um, it, I could suggest some, uh, sometimes when uh, you're facing a complex problem, it's easier to take it in smaller bites. And so maybe the easiest way is to separate out each of the issues. Uh, and so tonight you could make a decision about whether or not you wanna hire an interim city manager, uh, give some thought about the hiring process for city manager, uh, you could always defer that, but make a decision tonight about do you want an interim city manager or not? That's a very discreet question then. Um, and then if you don't, then you would just uh, make a motion very clearly that the acting city manager has all of the scope and authority of the city manager. So maybe that's an easier way to approach it, take it in smaller, smaller bites. Thank you, City Attorney Shockley. And uh, you know, again, Really good points brought up by City Attorney Shockley. The biggest issue that I, I want to address real, real talk, folks, is that we have a lot of things going on in our city. Uh, obviously, businesses are watching, developers are watching. We have a lot of hot items on the plate. We can't kick this can down the road. Um, we really need to, we really need to, I mean, I, I know it's a tough decision, We've made them before. I believe in each and every one of you all. Um, we need to vet this out because again, when we have the region watching this right now, we, we really cannot push this thing out another 30, 60 or 90 days. Um, we, we really have a lot of movement going on and we gotta, we gotta, we gotta make a big decision. I mean, that's whether it's tonight I really would like not like to see it happen another month uh, because of the momentum that we have going on. Um, obviously, we're going through a lot of stuff with our equity and our inclusion efforts in the city. I, we just, I don't know. So I see, I'm gonna get, pass it over to Council Member White because she has not had a chance to speak yet. So. Councilmember Hendrickson, just so if you're listening, I need to step away from the dais for a few moments. Uh, okay. But, so I'm gonna pass it to you, but I wanna recognize Councilmember White and Councilmember Seljavold, if you just wanna make a note uh, of that, and I'll be back in just a moment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councilmember White. 
Yeah, I don't really have much to add. I would just say, uh, to me, it's not just a matter of the cost. I think that this time, um, bringing in somebody who is not familiar with the community, with everything that we're going through, um, is a little scary. And I'm, uh, and in particular, after we heard from our previous mayor um, that it didn't go that well the last time, I think given the conditions that we have now, we would have even more trepidation. So I would actually, um, uh, in favor of extending the duties of our acting city manager. And I'm happy to make that as a motion uh, based on what Mr. Shockley said, that we need to um, continue to have the acting city manager continue with all of the uh, responsibilities of the city manager. Okay, so my understanding, Council Member White, is you're making a motion right now. Yes. That's my motion. Okay, and we will get to Councilmember Sousvold in a second. Um, is anybody, can I get a second on that? Somebody? Dalk was second. Okay, so we got a motion by Councilmember White and a second by um, Councilmember Dalquist. And I do believe Councilmember Sousvold, you're, did you wanna speak? Would we be able to have the motion succinctly repeated, please? Yeah. The yeah. I move that we, um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of what John Shockley said, that we, ex that we extend the role of the acting city manager to include all of the current duties of the um, existing city manager. Okay, so we did get a motion by White, Councilmember White, and a second by Councilmember Dahlquist. Does, does that make that clear, Councilmember Watson Curry? This is, is uh, Councilmember Dahlquist, and sure. uh, wasn't that to include the interim? that the sitting acting city manager would be the interim take the place of the interim is that what you meant council member white right right okay okay so we do have a motion by white and second by council member dahlquist council member says of all do you did you wish to speak well i, I have no i have no problem with this motion that's but i um what i was going to suggest is that Mr. Shockley talked about a job description. Could we ask that a, a job description be given to us at our next council meeting? And then did he have something to do with HR that uh, either work together or some sort of have a plan so we can tie maybe that motion in with a few other things to get kind of things done here? So again, if, I'd like to see like a job description if that needs to be done at the next meeting that we can approve it, figure out the time, how much we're going to give, and, and decide how far we're going to open it up at the next council meeting. Okay. But the motion's on the floor. That would have to be, and then it's kind of off that motion. Okay. Um, Councilmember Hendrickson, just so you know, I am back. Um, okay, cool. Just so you are aware, um, City Attorney Shockley wanted to speak on uh, something real quick here. Yeah, um, I appreciate the uh, uh, amendment to the motion to add in the, uh, de uh, bring back the city manager job description, which is already drafted. Um, we could also bring back uh, the parameters of what the advertisement uh, for the position would look like, um, and then a proposal for uh, uh, kind of the, you, you could potentially uh, ha just direct us to go ahead and assume it's an internal and uh, small external search, and then make the final decision in two weeks if, if you want us to advertise it external, but then we have everything ready to go uh, and so if you say hit uh, external, we can hit send, or if you want to keep it internal, we can, we can pare back the, the process. 
Okay, I missed the um, motion and the discussion. Thank you, Councilmember Hendrickson, for filling in uh, for me. So it's hard to do this job remote, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate it. So I'm not sure if there's any further discussion. I do see two hands up still on my screen. Uh, Councilmember White, Councilmember Dahlquist, if you want to be heard. Thank you, Mayor. My my uh, reason for phrasing it that way was just to split the two actions. So based on uh, Mr. Shockley's recommendation, one would. So that's why the, this motion would just be for um, making the decision whether we're having an interim or not. And so, and then my assumption was that then we would discuss since there seems to be still some things to work out in terms of what that what the search would look like for the permanent position. So that's why I split those two. So that's why I only included um, in my motion that we would make the decision tonight regarding um, whether we would keep uh, our acting city manager uh, and not have an interest. Not a worry at all. Um, I just wanted to be sure I was caught up on uh, what was decided in the motion. So um, not a problem at all. I think uh, if everyone is feeling comfortable with that, is there any uh, further discussion? See the attorney Shockley. And, and just to make clear, uh, the motion the motion is only to designate uh, or to authorize the acting city manager to have all the full authority of the city manager. And that's all that's included in the motion. I just want to want to be clear on okay. what what I'm supposed to be doing or not doing. So. No, that's cool because I wasn't here to hear it. So now I'm still getting caught up. So I want to be sure we're we're on the same page. Madam City Clerk, you. That's okay. Go ahead. It's, so, it's not a problem. So then nothing to do with the job description being brought to the. Okay. I, I'm just assuming we can still talk about that separately. Just keeping this clean in one act. No, that, no, that's a good idea, right. Council Member White. Thank you for doing that. I think, uh, again, we want to get it right, folks. I mean, this is a pretty big deal for our city and our future. So we don't want to uh, take this decision lightly. Uh, just know that, I mean, I've, I just want to make sure that I'm clear about what I said earlier that, I mean, we got to kind of, we got to, <laughs> it's a big decision. We can't wait on it. So by the time we come back, we need to have this uh, finalized. The public's watching and, uh, a lot of folks are as well that want to invest in our city. So uh, are we clear on the motion, Madam City Clerk? Uh, City Attorney Shockley, we're good? You know what's? Yeah, I think it's just a single motion right now. Yep. And then we can talk about the, what the council wants to do for the hiring process. OK, not a problem. I see hands flopping up. Is it that? OK, now they're gone. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anybody. <laughs> All right. Any further discussion on this item for this evening? Good job, folks. I like it. Madam City Clerk. So just to clarify, I've got a first by Council Member White and a second by Council Member Dahlquist to have acting city manager carry all the scope and authority of the city managers. And just to be clear, folks, this is uh, another three weeks uh, for the next meeting. So when we come back, it's uh, going to be go time and what we do. So just so you're aware. All right, Madam City Clerk, please. Dahlquist? Yes. Watson Curry? Yes. Carlson? No. Durand? Yes. White? Yes. Seljevold? Yes. Hendrickson? Aye. Lindas. No. Motion carries. Thank you, folks, for that discussion. Um, again, more to come, but I really do appreciate everyone um, speaking on it. So we'll see what happens. All right. So that moves us on to Item number 16, Mayor and Council Reports. Let's see, hands are up. Council Member White and then Council Member Lindas. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, did I miss something? Um, Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry. I think when you stepped out, I think Council Member White said she wanted to deal with that and then you guys could go into the longer term. Oh, my, yes. my apologies, I'm sorry. That, that's I think, fine. right? 
right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's My right. That's, that's correct. I forgot Sorry. to mention that too. I apologize, Mr. Mayor. Come on, Councilmember Hendrickson. <laughs> I'm just joking. Put me out there. My I, apologies. I, yeah, I, I should just relinquish and give it back to you because I was here, I wasn't here. Um, so I'll let whoever, so Council Member White, I apologize that I uh, did not catch that. So um, who wants to, I guess, begin that discussion? Because I wasn't part of that when they stepped out. So Council Member Lindos, I see your hand up. And then we go Council Member Dahlquist and Hendrickson. Thank you, Mary Judd. Um, I didn't know if um, Council Member White wanted to speak first. Um, or so I was. I was merely going to make a motion then to um, uh, direct uh, Attorney Shockley to develop um, both a job description um, for the city manager um, and um, start the process for um, an internal. And um, at this point, I, I'm reading the room external um, search, and we could always make the decision at the next meeting to include the external component. Um, and by external, I would um, advertise in those media for Minnesota, um, potentially North Dakota, but League of Minnesota cities. Um, so that's, I'm, I'm very much uh, regional um, Minnesota. Okay, thank you, Council Member Lindos. And then. Uh, I'll second. That's Council Member White. Okay, now I apologize. I saw your hand and then it went back down. Did you wish to be heard on that at all as well? My apologies on that. So we have a, a motion and a second. And then I see uh, three, two hands up. So I'll go to Councilmember Seljavold and then Carlson. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I would imagine that. Uh, the job description is probably already uh, pretty much in the rough draft or already done. Is it possible that we could have a working meeting and not do this simply at a council meeting? We can sit down or, you know, talk virtually and hash out some of the things and then vote on it at, at our next council meeting? Yeah, cert certainly uh, um, this week is Probably is probably won't happen this week, but potentially sometime next week we could schedule a, a work session to go over the next steps. Sounds appropriate. Thank you, Councilmember Seljavol, for that suggestion. Councilmember Carlson, I see your hand up. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I should have taken it down. Uh, Councilmember Seljavol brought up um, the point that I was going to ask, um, which was that there's already a, a job description developed. So I don't know that there, is a, there isn't any development needed necessarily for the job description. Okay. All right. Thank you, Council Member Carlson. All right, so there's been a motion. We have a second. We've had discussion. Your hand is still up, Council Member Carlson. You want anything to add? No worries, we're all good. All right. Madam City Clerk. So just a point of clarification. So the motion by Council Member Lindos, second by Council Member White to direct City Attorney uh -huh. to develop a job description, start process for the internal search, and then set a work session next week to finalize decisions. It sounds like it, it was is. To, it was to include internal and external and we could always make the determination next time if we didn't want to have external search. Okay, so to develop job description and start process for internal and external search and set meeting to have a work session next week to finalize decisions. All right. uh, unless there's an issue, do we have it <laughs> together? All right. All right, Dahlquist. Yes. Watson Curry. Yes. Carlson. Yes. Durand. Yes. White. Yes. Seljavold. Yes. Hendrickson. Aye. Lindos.
Lynn Doss. Yes. Motion carries. Is that, oh, are we good for that particular item? I just want to make sure that it wasn't a corollary. Or, okay. All right. All right. I don't want to, <laughs> all right, just making sure. All right. So then we'll move on to item number 16, mayor and council reports. Is there a council member that wishes to provide a report for the good of the order? Council member Carlson, then Dahlquist. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just wanted to give an update from the Lake Agassiz Regional Library Board, which met last week. Um, some very interesting statistics on long online library card applications since COVID happened. 960 new people have signed up for library cards. Um, also, there's been a 30% increase in requests for ebooks, and currently 6,900 um, individuals have books on hold um, for that. The Hoopless service, which is an online movie, TV type subscription service, um, it has been used very frequently. Um, when we talk about access and talk about um, ensuring that everybody has uh, the resources in our community, this is one that I think has been really helpful. Um, and they've gotten a lot of feedback, particularly from homeschooling um, families, that this has been very helpful. Also, the Department of Education provided funding to the library um, to be able to purchase Wi-Fi hotspots that can be checked out for free with unlimited data um, for two weeks at a time. And I think that that is also gonna be extremely helpful. There are um, numerous online programs that now have been integrated into the library um, offerings to the public. And not just hundreds, but thousands of people have participated across not just the state, but also the United States, such as the Eric Bergeson uh, Facebook Live uh, webinar type thing that was offered. He also did a tour of the Clay County landfill online and it was geared towards children, but actually they said a lot of adults watched it too. Um, what else? They're gonna continue curbside delivery and a very interesting new partnership that the Laura board is gonna be doing is with DEED, Minnesota DEED um, and Workforce Development to reevaluate in-person services within our library systems um, and really focusing on helping people get back on their feet after COVID. Uh, so I think that that is um, incredible that our library system is kind of stepping up to do that. They will be opening the library uh, for in-person services, I guess, um, probably July 1st. Uh, for the computers, you will need to sign up um, and it will be a limited amount of time to allow library staff to wipe it down and sanitize and things of that nature. So. Uh, I just want to give a huge shout out and kudos to uh, our local library staff and the Laurel Board for all the work that they've been doing during COVID to really provide that access to our community. That, that's all. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember Carlson. Uh, Councilmember Dahlquist. Thank you, Councilmember White. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I want to thank our transfer station for letting us dump some some junk that we can't keep on our boulevard till the fall with the free pickup. And uh, also I wanna mention that um, there's approval from the HUD to transfer public housing program funding from Play HRA to the Moorhead Public Housing and it's gonna help funding for years to come. And that's all I have for report. Thank you, Councilmember Dahlquist. Councilmember Watson Curry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted to note two items of gratitude. Um, first, just a blanket statement. I'd, I'd like to thank those who um, who are helping us move forward and, and helping us illuminate our own blind spots. So um, we'll just leave it at that. And secondly, I wanted to um, thank um, City uh, Manager Chris Volkers and say, Chris, I thank you for your human's work to the City of Moorhead and you've served with passion and distinction and I think it, your tenure has had a 
a very positive um, influence on our community. Um, I have had the honor of sharing your company both in public and in private. And regardless of what our, I or others have thrown at you, you have always um, carried yourself forward <laughs> and completed your duties um, with the professionalism that we've um, come to expect. So I wanted to just say, um, I wish you the best in your next um, professional role and also much happiness um, as you move closer to your family. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Wasson Curry. That was uh, well well said. Thank you, Councilmember White. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to mention that the Market Human Rights Commission will hold their uh, meeting this Wednesday at four thirty, and they're very eager to get citizens' input. Um, you can find the information on the City of Moorhead webpage of how to join remotely. Uh, and they will also be doing a series of listening sessions so that information will be shared publicly as well and i'll just uh chime in with uh council member watson curry's comment to thank city Man manager Volker for her service to our community and that we wish her well um, in this new big adventure and, and are very happy that she has the opportunity now to be close to her Thank you, Council Member White. Really appreciate that. And thank you for the shout out for the uh, July uh, 1st event with the listing sessions upcoming. Uh, see Council Member Hendrickson, then Lendas. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to echo Council Member White and uh, Council Member Watson Curry. Thank you, Chris, for a great three years. Um, we've come a long way since when you first started, and it's through hard work and dedication and working well with council. So I really appreciate your efforts. And uh, even though I hate to see you go, I wish you the best of luck in your future. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, council member uh, Hendrickson. Really appreciate that. Uh, council member Lindos. Um, I guess I can echo um, what my fellow council members have also said. Um, Chris, I, I probably knew or I haven't worked with you or had the privilege of working with you as long as they have, um, but I've, I've certainly enjoyed the opportunity um, and your patience in dealing with potential questions and other issues that I might have brought up um, shows, uh, well, it helped, it's helped me, helped me grow in this role. So I'll miss you. Uh, um, I wanted to echo, I guess um, I do want to say that um, I, I noticed our library was back up because um, all of a sudden I got a notice for um, overdue books, so I'll be bringing those back um, uh, to the <laughs> library and potentially hopefully getting more now. Um, but uh, there's a, there, there are things going on in the city now. We're starting to open up, and um, besides the listening sessions for the Human Resource um, uh, um, Commission that, that's happening, I also want to um, point out that there's other activities. Um, you can get them, uh, see what's going on on our website. Um, the farmer's market is active now, um, as well as the Streets Alive event is going to be coming up, which will be really nice. You can be socially distanced as you bike and walk and, um, around, around the cities. Um, I did want to bring up one um, meeting that people went to. Um, this is a project being hosted by Churches United, the Silver Linings Apartments. And um, this is a, it was an informational meeting that was really nice to see um, a well thought out um, a possible project can really benefit our region. And if people aren't familiar with that, I would also urge you to, um, uh, or I encourage you to um, learn more about it and how, how it can help our, our region. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Landas. And also, thank you also for the shout out uh, for, for the uh, Silver Linings, um, I guess you can call it a meeting or webinar or meeting. A um, lot of good, good information. And thank you for the council members that uh, were able to make that. Uh, that was a really positive thing to see. Uh, also, I see hands up, Council Member Seljavold, then Hendrickson. No, no, Council Member Seljavold. I see the hand. No, sorry, I can't hear you. Sorry, right, I'm sorry. That's okay. No worries. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll give a shout out. I'll give a shout out to that Libby app at the Moorhead Public Library. I've read more books, listened to more audio books, and every and get it all downloaded. It's fantastic. But to Chris, I thank you for your service to the city of Moorhead, 
And anybody who moves because a family has their priority straight. So thank you for your service here. Best of luck. Thank you, Councilmember Seljavold. Councilmember Hendrickson, your hand is up. Now it's down. I'm assuming that was. I can't learn, Mr. Mayor. So yeah, it was my <laughs> accident. So thanks. Hey, we're, we all are learning. We all are learning. Anything else anyone else wants to share for the uh, good of the order from the reports? Okay, I'll uh, get into my <clears throat> May report. Uh, I'll try to be brief with my uh, shout outs here. Shout out to MBA, let's talk business. Uh, thank you for the folks that were uh, in attendance. If I'm not mistaken, I think my notes reflect somewhere close to 40 people or more that were there uh, for that. We talked about uh, with uh, also with Chief Shannon Monroe, we talked about uh, law enforcement, their connection with the uh, community, how businesses can be allies in this effort to connect our communities together uh, when, with the lens of equity and inclusion. So thank you uh, to Sherry uh, for putting it out, Sherry Larson for putting it out. It was a great conversation, positive, positive uh, meeting. Also, uh, just so folks know, I have been meeting frequently with the mayors from uh, Barnesville, Dilworth, Hawley, and Glendon, talking about uh, potential partnerships in economic development, workforce development, how we can all uh, be in this together, primarily because of the budget uncertainties from uh, St. Paul. We may be looking at uh, each other and how we can work together to build coalitions as we look at uh, infrastructure projects and there beyond. Uh, also, a shout out to President Kraft for meeting with me uh, to talk about equity and inclusion efforts that are taking place at, uh, at the Concordia College. Also, uh, attended the Greater Fargo Moorhead Economic Development. Uh, is it corporation or committee? I keep committee. committee, that's what I thought. Um, too many acronyms for me to try to remember all. Uh, but nevertheless, a really good meeting there. Uh, Joe Razzo talked about the EDC putting together a uh, task force uh, to discuss uh, racial equity and inclusion in our, in our region and our primary sector businesses uh, can be a part of that. So if there's anybody on the council um, or anyone uh, within our community, re regardless of it's council, MBA, I wanna make sure that Moorhead and Clay County are a part of that conversation, need some strong voices that are willing to listen and learn about that, please let me know. Uh, also had the opportunity to speak at the chamber, the FM chamber regarding uh, the professionals of color. Again, had about 38 to 40 folks there. Really good conversation about uh, folks wanting to be interested in the uh, in uh, regarding business, entrepreneurship, the political process, young leaders that are trying to make their way throughout the region. Um, really positive uh, talk in that um, arena as well. Also signed two proclamations, one for the Juneteenth celebration. Thank you to Mayor Mahoney for co-signing on that. I thought the proclamation language was excellent. Also the uh, Home Builders Association um, Home Ownership Month also sign it as a proclamation again with the council and for those that don't know, now you know that we are here about affordable housing, promoting safe communities, promoting the, the fact that we wanna have everyone in this city be uh, granted and, and provided the avenues for access uh, for uh, home ownership or at least the opportunity to be homeowners in this community. So thank you to all people and entities who have been supportive in that effort. Also attended the uh, Metro Cog Policy Board, uh, still moving forward on the Highway 10 corridor. Uh, thank you, Council Member Lindos, for mentioning the silver linings. Also, uh, shout out to Pastor Sue for putting that together and her and her team, Brent Brandt. Uh, and again, to Council Member Lindos's point, please feel free to go and check that out. It's, it's going to be great for those who are 55 and older that are homeless and trying to maintain a safe and healthy lifestyle and community. Also, thank you to Council Member White for mentioning the human rights, uh, human rights gathering that will take place on July 1st. And I want folks to know it doesn't matter 
what walk of life you come from, what your ethnicity, your gender, your uh, uh, sexual orientation, however you see fit, please come to listen, learn, and have, and have your voice heard. Uh, this is a, a conversation that needs to take place throughout our, our community. It's more important for people who have been historically disadvantaged to tell their stories. And again, as I've been uh, stating, stating throughout this whole last three weeks, listening with humility. Uh, again, if we're going to come together as a community, it is good to be able to listen to the stories of those who live in our community and find out how we could become closer together. And with all of that, before I pass it over, the last meeting with our city manager, who has been a very important person in my growth uh, as a leader. Uh, I know that uh, when I came on board, you're kind of wondering, what does this guy know? Am I going to like cause you, know, you a lot of problems? <laughs> Probably well worth questioning. But I do honestly, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate the work that you have done. And for folks <clears throat> that don't know, uh, you know, City Manager Volkers has honestly provided me a lot of education. And I was, again, able to listen with humility for decisions that I've had to learn, you know, as a part of my growth. Because I've obviously made mistakes, will continue to make mistakes, but she's always been there with me every step of the way to make sure. I'm looking at the bigger picture for our city and for the residents. So I really appreciate you bearing with me as I learned uh, to really just kind of grow to be the leader that I'm trying to be. So thank you for the tireless work. The emails coming at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning <laughs> uh, so that we can prepare to do what's best for our city. Uh, your work ethic is beyond, I mean, should never be questioned uh, for all the stuff that you've done for us. So I guess just really owe you a sense of gratitude professionally, personally, and also for the residents and the, and the folks within our city, our city staff, our city council. Thank you. And best wishes. You know, it's, you'll be with your family. You only get one family in life. I admire your decision and your courage to make this decision. And so with that, I'll pass it to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, council members. That was very kind um, and very um, meant a lot to me. So thank you. Um, one thing I did do last week, in case you haven't seen it, is I did a column in the extra, my final column. I do a bi-weekly column, as you know, and I did my final column in, in saying goodbye to Moorhead. And I just wanted to highlight a couple things from that column, because what I talked about was, um, you know, how, how, not because of me, but how far the city has come in three and a half years since I've been here, and the development we've got going on, and the teamwork when I started, um, any council members that were on the council back then will know that we had a little bit of a divide between council and staff and some other internal things that we just wanted to do better at strategic planning and stuff. So there's a lot of work I'm proud of, but you should be proud of and the community should be proud of. And it's not, again, because of me, it's because of this city. So with that, um, I did thank the council. I thank the um, executive leadership team because they have been a godsend to me. And the council has always been very supportive and always wants to do the right thing for our city. And the employees here are bar none. I've been CEO or court administrator or city manager in a couple places now. And um, Boy, the city, the employees here really work hard. They're dedicated and they want to do what's right for the community. And that's the best I think anybody could hope for. They're here to serve. And I was very proud to lead that and very honored. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam City Manager. And uh, again, uh, best wishes for you and your family in the future. And obviously, if you ever want to come back and visit, you know, we'll, we'll definitely be here. <laughs> Thank you. All right, then we're moving on to item number 18, executive session, which provides 
18A, executive session pursuant to Minnesota statute sec section 13D.05, subdivision 3, paren C, paren 3, for the purpose of developing offers or counter offers for the sale of a portion of Woodlawn Point, generally described as an area between the Red River and Woodland Park Drive and lying north and south of Fifth Avenue South. Is there a motion to take us into executive session? Dasso moves. Carlson second. Motion is made and seconded. Assuming no discussion, so we'll move over to Madam City Clerk. Dahlquist. Yes. Watson Curry. Yes. Carlson. Yes. Durand. Yes. White. <clears throat> yes. Seljavold. Yes. Hendrickson. Aye. Lindos. Yes. Motion carries. We are in executive session. Thank you, folks.
during the meeting? Yeah. Let me know when you, uh, I'm good? Okay. It is 9.06 p.m. and we will adjourn the meeting for this evening. Good night, Moorhead. <laughs>